My name is Alan King, and I've got a secret. I've got a secret brought to you tonight by Green Whip, the whipped topping mix of all the flavor richness of whipped cream from General Foods. Live from New York, here is I've Got a Secret, starring Steve Allen. Hello once again, and welcome to a special edition of I've Got a Secret, right? Really, it is special. If you've been watching CBS tonight, you know that we don't have our normal panel with us this evening. So, uh... <laughs> didn't put that the right way, I guess. So let me introduce to you the members of our abnormal panel, ladies and gentlemen. First, sitting in for beautiful Betsy Palmer, here is beautiful Tom Poston. <laughs> And next, sitting in for handsome Bill Cullen, here is handsome Peggy Cass. <laughs> sitting in for lovely Bess Myerson, here is lovely Orson Bean. And Super sitting fine. in for <laughs> smiling Henry Morgan, here is smiling Kitty Carlisle. <laughs> I'm actually not being facetious, panel, when I say smiling Henry Morgan. I have a note here reminding me that he smiled on September 3rd, 1959. Just <laughs> a little fleeting smile played across his features. More of a nervous titter is what it actually was, but how are you? Hey, uh, did you see yes. the other panel on your oh, show? Yeah. Yes. What'd you think? Oh, they were marvelous. Simply four of them. <laughs> <laughs> all right. got them all right. Of course, yeah. was sitting in my chair. Well, that's, that's a nice chair. Anyway, if you're all set to play our game, and I'm sure you are, Ben, yes, we'll bring well, in we our sure first that. contestant, please. Here we go. You've heard this uh, question before, panel. What is your name, please? My name is Helen Luth. Luth? Yes. How do you uh, spell that? Uh, spell that. <laughs> L-U-T-H. Helen Luth. All right. And your name, please? Uh, my name is Helen Luth. Ah, oh. Helen Luth? And uh, what's your name, sweetheart? My name is Helen Luth. Well, that's well. <laughs> like, no. Here we have these three Luth women here on this stage. <laughs> I mean, uh, now, will the real Helen Luth please stand up? <laughs> that's right. Actually, each of these ladies uh, is named Helen Luth, and uh, they all live in Newman, Illinois. Each of the ladies is married to a farmer, and they each have two children. See, it's a little different than your program. And in addition to that, they all have a secret. So ladies, if you'll whisper it to me, we'll show it to the audience, and then we'll get the game going. How about that? <laughs> well, panel, the clue to the secret concerns something that these uh, ladies share, and we'll start the game. Share, share. Something that they share, yes. We'll start the game with you, Tom. Uh, thank you. Well, I think that I can presume at least that one among the things you share is a relative. Is that right, Miss, Miss Luth? Mrs. Luth, number three? No. You don't share any relatives at all? Yes, but that's not our secret. Oh, only by marriage, right? That's right. That's well, telling them. <laughs> do you share an activity in your hometown? If they do, it's irrelevant. It is. Yes. Uh, that you share a relevant in your hometown. <laughs> and a relevant never forgets, as you would be the first to know. But anyway. Uh, Miss, Mrs. Luth, number two, uh, is this a, a piece of property or something that you own mutually? No. Well, in a certain broad sense, uh, it is. You own a broad. No, no, come on. Tom. That's $20 down, 60 to go. We go uh, right down the line now. Oh. Peggy? Um, Miss, Mrs. Luth, Mrs. Luth, um, would it help me to know what you share? Yes. Oh, well, now, Mrs. Luth, anyone can answer of the three Luths. Uh, is this an animate object that you share? Is it alive? No. No. Is no. it dead? <laughs> <laughs> is it a thing that's made out of something like, I mean, is it something like a, a mechanical thing that you share? Yes. Hot dog. There's, there's half the money, Orson Bean. It's not a mechanical husband, is it? <laughs> you, you, you three, Mrs. Mrs. Luth, share the same mechanical thing. Is that right? 
Right. And you, is this the kind of thing that you could carry from farm to farm? No. May I ask Mrs. Luth, uh, number middle, uh, <laughs> do you live on the same farm? Well, not on the same, no. Would it help me, uh, this lady, would it help me to know what, in what relationship to each other you live? Not. No, strictly speaking, or Mrs. Luth number four. Let me ask Mrs. Luth number one. <laughs> strictly, not strictly speaking, it wouldn't no. help. No. They all live in Newman, Illinois. All right. Do you carry this thing around Newman with you? No. Sixty down, twenty to go. Have we established that a husband is not a relative? Number one. <laughs> it's irrelevant. Relative. It's irrelevant. It's irrelevant. Everything is irrelevant. Everything. Ellen, I just decided. Um, no matter what you say, it's irrelevant. No, Mrs. Luce, huh? Mrs. Luce, number two, does this mechanical thing carry you around anywhere? No. no. Wonderful. <laughs> um, does it have movable parts, number three? No. Oh. Is it very, very valuable? Eh, when you need it. Can I live without it? You could live without it, I suppose. It's kind of a tricky secret uh, panel. Actually, in case you think these ladies don't have enough trouble about with having the same name, uh, being the same town, they actually go to the same church, too, and they have a lot of things in common. Their secret is that they share the same telephone party line. Uh, ladies, was this uh, party line thing a coincidence, or did you plan it, or what? It just, just happened that way because you live in the same neighborhood, I guess. Now, I understand that two of you are married to brothers. That's what I meant by the irrelevant. Right. Nothing to do with the secret. And one of you is married to a cousin of the brother. Yes. That explains the three Luths, and they were already named Helen, so there's the main explanation. What is your main problem in having the same name? The mail. Keep getting each other's mail. Do you have any way until you open these letters to tell which Helen Luth uh, should no. be getting? Only if they're addressed in our husband's name. Ah, I see. Well, it so happens, uh, panel, that uh, one of the very few ways that these Helen Luths have to uh, state their individuality uh, is uh, in regard to their children. Uh, Helen Luth has two girls, and Helen Luth has two boys, and Helen Luth has a boy and a girl. <laughs> Isn't that nice? Ladies, lots of luck answering those phone calls, and it's nice to have had you with us tonight. Thank you. Uh, we'll be back with you again in just a moment but first let's watch this a lot of good things go into jello pudding and pie filling but the most important thing in it is you because you cook it it just has to taste better a richer chocolate parfait a creamier chocolate cream pie with a little bit of you in each one of them. No dessert tastes as good as a pudding you cook yourself. And no pudding tastes as good as jello pudding and pie filling. And now may we have our next contestant, please. Familiar face, huh, panel? Yeah. Well, well you didn't, of course, you remember meeting apprentice, uh, or seaman apprentice, or apprentice seaman? Seaman apprentice. Seaman apprentice Sherlin of the Waves. Uh, you met her at the office when you were um, learning how to play I've Got a Secret. Well, when we, uh, when we introduced you to uh, Miss Sherlin, we did not tell you that she was going to be on the program tonight. We no, were yeah. sneaky. No, no, no. Pretty sneaky. So, Miss Sherlin, if you'll whisper your secret to me, we'll show it at the same time to the audience at home. <laughs> it took her a little while to tell me. And uh, <laughs> you're breathing in my ear, but that's all right. Tell me a little bit more, would you? <laughs> ah. This program is a lot of fun to MC, but your ears get tickled all the time when those things happen. Well, panel, the clue to uh, apprentice Seaman Sherlin's secret concerns something that happened. And we'll start again this time with Kitty Carlisle. Miss Sherlin, that was such a long secret. Does it concern the story of your life? <laughs> no, ma'am. No. Um, it has nothing to do with playing I've Got a Secret. No. Oh. What? Well, it does in some sense. In it a rough sense. It, it, are you going to play I've Got a Secret somewhere in the future that you're trying to do something about? 
No, it, not on the base. It's irrelevant again. It's irrelevant. I, I, I warned you, irrelevant. everything would be irrelevant. I'm more irrelevant than anybody <laughs> you've seen all day. <laughs> and it's immaterial. Uh, does it have something to do with someone else? Yes. Uh, okay, $20 down. 60 to go. Tom Poston. Does it have to do with the, your branch of the service or the service generally? In an indirect yes. way, I guess. In a very indirect way. Well, I won't pursue it. That may I ask if it would help us to know where this is going to take place? In an indirect it, way, it would. <laughs> In an indirect and irrelevant way. It help us way. to know when it's going to take place. Yeah, well, none of your business, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not here to help you people, you know. <laughs> Yes, in a sense, it will. Well, it's not happening now, first of all, is it? I hope not. It's not no, is it something that's going to happen in the future? Is it something that you really came to New York to find out about so that it would help you in the future when you do this thing? Uh, I don't think any of us know what we're talking about here. Forty dollars has been shot, and we go to Peggy Cash. Well, would it help us uh, to know where this is going to happen? Mm. Here. Here. Right here. Here. It's going to happen here. Are you any better off? Is it going to happen here tonight? <laughs> yes. Sure. What are you going to do? <laughs> it's going to happen here tonight in this studio. Yes. With somebody. $60 down, 20 to go. Horse and bean. Well, this poor simp of a panel is not finding out the important things. Does it have to do with the fact that you were eavesdropping on us the other day? No. No? 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 You, weren't you studying us to find out our all kind of terrible things about us? No. Does this have something to do with something you're going to do to us? Uh, no. No? Well, there goes all the money. Panel, I think that uh, Miss Sherman and I should approach you so that I can uh, introduce her to you properly. Now, are you getting a little glimmering? Here's the situation. I would like you to meet officially Seaman Apprentice Shirley. Her secret is that she's meeting you right now for the very first time. The girl you met and talked to for more than an hour the other day was Seaman Apprentice Sherlin, and here she is. <laughs> Just to uh, cut down a little bit on the confusion, this young lady is Joan Sherlin, and the other young lady then is Jane Sherlin, and she is the one that you met the other day. No, no. Oh, no? No, I'm not Jane. You are? My name is Jean. I have never met you nor this panel before. You met my sister, Jane. <laughs> oh! Hey! you're going to start turning into a sneaky program here. I have nothing to do with this whole thing. Now I don't know. You're triplets. <laughs> Those things come to me just like that, folks. I figure when you see three people, they, you know, there's a fair chance it could be triplets. Now, I'm the one who met to tell the truth panel a few days ago. But this afternoon, Joan pretended to, to uh, play as me to fool the panel. But then Jean and I switched, and she pretended to be me to fool you. I don't even know who I am anymore. But, uh, but in rehearsal, I played myself. And we are waves of the Navy. You're waves of the Navy. Uh, I see. Well, sir, there's a man out there going like that, which in Navy parlance means get off the ship, I guess. <laughs> I'd like to thank all of you uh, ladies very much for joining us. Uh, and I'm going to watch my step around here from now on. You're all very charming. It was a pleasure to meet you. Thank you. <laughs> I knew I didn't get much sleep last night, and for a minute I thought I was cracking up altogether. Because <laughs> I'm here in the afternoon, I kind of have a general idea of what's going on. Well, let's pause now for a moment before we meet our special guest for tonight. And Bill Cullen has a very interesting idea for you. Tell the truth, Bill. My idea is a challenge for the next time you entertain friends. Now, maybe it's a special occasion with candles, but whatever, when you get to dessert, you serve it with Dream Whip instead of whipped cream. Now, you think about that for a minute and ask yourself, why not? Dream Whip, you know, has all the flavor richness of whipped cream, real country, fresh flavor. And Dream Whip, the whip topping makes whips up smooth and creamy every time. It stays fresh on your shelf, ready to use at any time, any time you need it. Now, you just take a look at that. How could anyone resist that? 
calories, only 14 to a tablespoon. You can be proud to serve Dream Whip anytime on all your desserts. In fact, I challenge you, the next time you entertain friends, serve a Dream Whip dessert. They'll love it. Dream Whip, the one with all the flavor richness of whipped cream. <laughs> And now it's time to meet our special guest, the distinguished author and stand-up comedian. And if that's incongruous, it isn't, because his latest book is really on the bestseller list. The book is called Help, I'm a Prisoner in a Chinese Bakery, and the author is Mr. Alan King. That's pretty nice. Let me guess, you're opening a fruit stand, right? That's exactly right. No, what... What is, uh, what's happening here? Well, actually, I don't have a secret in a sense, but I have a test for the panel. Ah. Uh, the panel has, have known each other for quite a while, and they should know a great deal about each other. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, what we'd like to do is, Tom, uh, what did you have for breakfast this morning? I had uh, bacon and scrambled eggs with uh, cream cheese and toast and a bowl of wheat checks with... Uh, with uh, some other kind of Kellogg thing and uh, wheat germ and milk. And then I ate. <laughs> and cream cheese. That's a very normal breakfast. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, I would like to show you a breakfast that one of the other three panelists had. And I'd like you to see if you can guess which one had what or how or in and around. A glass and metro cow. Should Tom guess? Yeah, I would like Tom to oh, guess. Oh, it's my guess. Yes, your guess. Oh. No, oh, 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 oh. That's it. That's the whole that was it. One glass. Mm. Oh, gosh, I don't know which one. I'll guess, uh, I'll guess, uh, uh, Peggy Cat. <laughs> He'll get you, buddy. <laughs> Will she, the panelists... had a great lunch. <laughs> Will the panelists that really had the Metrical for breakfast please stand up? <laughs> what else do you have? Well, we have some other questions up, Peggy. <laughs> Here we have... A very dirty table. <laughs> and uh, knowing the other three panelists as well as you do, we feel that you can guess. This is the contents of three waste paper baskets. And this is legit. These legit. really came out of the baskets. Of your three panelists. And uh, can we read out? We'll give you a couple of hints. What do we have here? We have, a, we have a telegram that says, Merry Christmas and best wishes for Happy New Year. Bill Paley, that's the chairman of the board of CBS, and uh, so. Gary Moore got one of these two before they asked him, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, uh, well, it's just some old movie, uh, film, I mean. Uh, film. Film, we, film here's something. a letter from NBC. Oh. oh. <laughs> Storyline is developing here. Yes, we have a uh, laurel wreath from a uh, Nero complex. <laughs> and uh, New Year's Eve. Little, this uh, came out. Golden fuzz. Peggy, can you guess? Guess. Uh... <laughs> you just want me to guess that first one? That first yes, one? Yes, please. Which panelist? What waste paper? <laughs> <laughs> Whom does this belong to? <laughs> I think that the contents of that waste paper basket belong to Tom Poston. A dick! Oh! <laughs> right? We'll find out at the very end. We have, uh, we have the, the New York uh, the Sunday Times, the sports section. What about oh. Here's a uh, Christmas card from uh, Carol Channing and Charles Lowe. Here's one from a uh, Christmas card from Old Coward. Yes. Oh. And here's one from Charlie Weaver. <laughs> <laughs> and a horoscope, 1965. A cruise brochure from 1963. Another Christmas card. Another Christmas card. And uh, some sugarless gum. And some gumless sugar. <laughs> yes, can you? I think it's, I think it's Kitty. 
Mm -hmm. All right, we'll find out. Now we have That's the empty. <laughs> is that what you feel? It is awesome. Beer cans. Beer cans. Here's a hand laundry list. It's really actually dated May 29th, 1964. <laughs> and the wow. total is $46.89. And it says, this is your 12th notice. <laughs> He's a very dirty person. Who and it's a quick frozen Chinese peapods product. It's gotta Taiwan. be, gotta be. Yeah. Some old magazines. Not old magazines. We have a perfume cover <laughs> and a empty box of chipperillos. And the beer cans. And the beer cans. Well, I'd say it's Orson's anyway, all that beer and everything. And that's rope. You hit all three of them right. Perfect. I got it right. I got it right. That was really just a notice from the laundry. They, re they rejected it, actually. <laughs> Orson, uh, this is a date book list. Three, one of the three panelists spent the exciting weekend in this manner. We'd like to guess. Friday, home, watch TV in red. Saturday, home, watch TV in red. Iris Borger says... <coughs> <laughs> Sunday, a very exciting sleigh ride and dinner out. And Monday, well, tonight, will not divulge is a question mark. Can no you, comment. No comment at all. I think, uh, I think Peggy is romantic enough to go sleigh riding on Saturday night when it was cold enough to... No, it was Sunday afternoon. But well, Sunday afternoon was a pretty chilly day, too, yes. I think uh, sleigh riding. Why could you go sleigh riding? I'd, I'd still say Peggy. Peggy Cash, will the real possessor of this weekend date book please stand up? I knew ah. it. I knew it. Thank you, Peggy. Thank you, Peggy. Thank you, Peggy. Big television personality, two nights out of the weekend, and then he's home. Come on the weekend. I'm sorry, I didn't think. Some of that fruit will never go wrong. <laughs> and now, oh. this is the way Betty Furness does. <laughs> These are three refrigerators. They're not the real, actual refrigerators that are owned by the panelists. Kitty, this is for you, Kitty Carla. But these are duplicates, actual duplicates of the three refrigerators that are owned by the three panelists. We'd like to see if you can guess which one belongs to what. Now they blew this the card. the actual food from their kitchen. But they right? never put the card in there, right? Okay. Here <laughs> All right, we have some uh, prune butter. <laughs> what? What? Prune and butter. butter. I don't know. Whatever it is, it must be good. A frozen chocolate cake, six boxes of assorted cookies, a bottle of champagne, and two plastic bags of chocolates. Oh, yes, and some caviar. And a bottle of ketchup alone. <laughs> Belong, belongs to Reginald Van Gleeson, I think. <laughs> High liver. Well, from the waste paper basket contents, um, uh, Orson drinks beer, so I would say that's Tom's uh, icebox. Well, I'm not going to say yes or no. I'm going to look at the other refrigerator. <laughs> Let's see what we have here. You saw that? All right. <laughs> we have. Uh, they don't eat anything. These panelists. We have a bottle of champagne again. Yeah. And you can, you know, you can take it back if yeah. you think that. Yeah. Uh, we have two bottles of beer, six bottles of uh, soda, a plate of tacos, four and a half pounds of chopped meat. <laughs> four and a half pounds of chopped meat. Don't look at me. It's laying there like a lump. <laughs> <laughs> and we have. Eight uncooked Italian sausages once belonged to Henry Armetta. <laughs> <laughs> now I know why he used to want to I this, say that's there. got to be, uh, that's got to be Peggy's because she's got uh, dogs to feed. Oh, that explains all dogs the dogs. That's, that's, suggest, that's what the, the Italian sausages are The dogs are eating the chopped meat. You got an Peggy's dog, eating the tacos. <laughs> all right, well, let's see. Now, well then, of course we have... Uh, we have low-calorie uh, orange soda. We have low-calorie mayonnaise. We have an uncooked uncooked chicken. A low-calorie chicken. A low-calorie chicken. We have leftover turkey stuffings. We have leftover salads. We have leftover rum punch. Oh, and a crummy beer he's got in there. And also the same bottle of ketchup we moved from the rear to cut down on expenses. Kitty? Would you like to think the last... Two choices over again? I've never chosen silly iceboxes in my life. <laughs> For a punchline, we bring on yours. <laughs> That's got to be Orson's. 
He's got all those Metrical things that he eats for breakfast and the beer that he drinks for dinner. A hundred percent. One hundred percent. Alan, you had a very nice uh, rummage sale here. <laughs> I'm going to go out and defrost my fingers from the demonstrations. Alan, we look forward to reading your new book. The title again is... Help, I'm a Prisoner in a Chinese Baker. We'll get you out of it. Takes a night. Alan, Thank King, you very much, Steve. Thank you. Oh, dear. Not a fun. Well, right now, let's take a minute to catch our breath. Uh, don't go away, because we'll be back right after this message from a surprise visitor. I flew back not to talk to you, Steve, but to the ladies. You know, everyday facial expressions, such as smiles or frowns, can cause lines and wrinkles. And all day, when you use your face most, is when dry skin lines set in. But you can avoid them, as I do, with new Deep Magic Dry Skin Conditioner. Deep Magic is so silky light, so completely non-greasy. You wear it all day when you need it most. Look, lavish it on, and deep magic disappears, absorbs quickly to moisturize and soften your skin, to protect all day against aging dryness. Deep magic is perfect under makeup because it's non-greasy, never cakes or streaks. Your makeup is so natural looking, so fashionable. I wear it every day, whether I'm wearing makeup or not. So do as I do, guard against aging dry skin lines and wrinkles. Moisturize with new Deep Magic Dry Skin Conditioner by Tony. I recommend it. We'll be back in the uh, kitchen in just a moment. Incidentally, the National Safety Council asks, if you do not have seat belts in your car, please get them. If you have them, use them, because they're very important. And if you don't even have a car, Buy some seat belts anyway, it's a nice thing. <laughs> Wrap them around you and you won't fall out of your clothes or whatever. I'm doing. Uh, by the way, our guest, special guest next week is Peter Lawford. Get a load of these icebox raiders here. They're all eating all that fattening food. <laughs> hey, the program's over. You were marvelous. Thanks so much. A hand for the To Tell the Truth panel, huh? Great. <laughs> Now, from Instant Maxwell House, this free cookbook. 400 deliciously different recipes, like crisp golden shrimp tempura, coffee marble cake with fluffy frosting, and tempting pastries that go so well with coffee, especially when it's Instant Maxwell House, the one that's rich enough to make a really good pot of coffee. This 274-page coffee cookbook, yours free with inner seals from two jars of Instant Maxwell House. Get details at your grocer's. I've Got a Secret has been brought to you tonight by Dream Whip, Jell-O Pudding and Pie Filling and Instant Maxwell House Coffee. All fine products from General Foods.